Pain, it consumes you from within. Life is meaningless, tasteless. All I could ever dream of is escape. But I'm stuck in this dark hole. Hey, Maxwell, maybe you're over-exaggerating. It was only just two bad matches. Yeah, I guess you're right. 2-0 loss against Arsenal in the FA Cup. A look at the table now that we're done with December. We're into mid-season, and no, we're not going to be buying anyone because... Uh... We're a little poor, but nonetheless, we are 6th place right now. It's a pretty good start to the season, 9 wins, 4 draws, 8 losses, uh, 31 points. We're 6th in the league right now, so I mean, that's pretty good. Uh, just to sum up the top 5, Spurs in 1st, Liverpool 2nd, Manchester City 3rd, 4th Chelsea, and to round off the top 5, Leicester City. Next up, Arsenal. Early into the match, a chance here for Arsenal, Aubameyang trying to find some room, cuts inside, takes the shot, and it's saved by the keeper. 23 minutes play, Milivojevic on the ball now, passing it to Max Meyer. Meyer finds Jordan Ayew in the box, who stops, leaves it for Townsend, and Townsend, even though the goalkeeper got a hand to that, still scores. It's 1-0 to Crystal Palace. Moments later, another chance for Crystal Palace here. Milivojevic to Max Meyer to James MacArthur, passing it to Jordan Ayew in the box once again, who passes it to James MacArthur this time, assists once again for Jordan Ayew, and that's our second goal of the game. 39 minutes played, another chance for Arsenal here. Kolasinac on the ball, crosses it in for Grealish, and Jack Grealish gets a goal for Arsenal, but it's not going to be enough. We still get the three points. So yeah, we did the double against Arsenal. Am I surprised? No. Manchester City. Seven minutes into the match, a chance for Manchester City here. Bernardo Silva trying to find someone in the box. He sees Sergio Aguero, who is going to easily put it into the back of the net. And we're already down 1-0 against Manchester City. It wasn't all doom and gloom for us though. Zaha on the ball, finesse, and... Yeah, it was all doom and gloom. 28 minutes played, another chance for Manchester City here. Bernardo Silva bringing it to Sergio Aguero on the edge of the box, crosses it in. Sokka with not the greatest clearance, but it goes to ta- Thank you, Townsend. Very cool. Later on, another chance for Manchester City, a chance just to end our club's existence, basically, because that's how much they dominated us in this match. Aguero right over the keeper, and it's 3-0 to Manchester City. Finally, I get to tell you guys who we have in our youth academy right now, because like I told you guys in episode 1, a few things got messed up, so some of the prospects I did have had to go because they never got saved. But anyways, let's get on with this. Marcus Baker, 52 rated, 14 years old, 63 to 89 potential. I don't know yet. Will Kelly looks a bit promising here, but he is 49 rated, 16 years old, and has a potential of 61 to 87. Liam Ward, kind of mediocre, 64 potential to 84 potential. Liam Robinson could be pretty good. I mean, 50 rated right now. He is 16 years old, so that's a little troubling, but he does have a max of 88 potential. Sean Kelly, 46 rated. Uh, 61 to 83 potential. Dylan Brown, actually looking pretty good. 50 rated, potential of 70 to 96. He's the only player in this academy that I really think might actually be okay. Who knows? But we decided to buy another scout and send him to Italy. Now, I don't really know how youth scouting works in real life, but how do you draw players from Italy to come to Crystal Palace? Hello, I am from Crystal Palace and I would like you to join our academy. What makes you better than Juventus? Uh... We have cooler colors. So we lost 4-1 to Southampton last time. So maybe this time around, since it is at home, we can redeem ourselves. And redeem ourselves we did, because in the fifth minute, Townsend on the edge of the box, trying to scout someone out in the middle. It's Jordan Ayew. It's a beautiful little poke into the back of the net. And it's 1-0 to Crystal Palace. Watching. Hey, Wilfred, I'm open. And now we face Highlighters FC. Oh wait, sorry, I meant Sheffield United. I didn't recognize them in their blinding colors that seemingly have nothing to do with their club. I mean, come on, Adidas. I can understand a lime third kit. 
but not when the away kit is white. Listen, Adidas. I'm going to put this term on the screen. Read it. And please reflect. Done? Yeah, cool. Try doing that more often, please. 10 minutes into the match, a chance for Sheffield here, but it's cleared out. Not really cleared out. I want to say terribly cleared out. So at least Sheffield with another chance. And luckily, Guaita is there to save the day once again. 25 minutes played, Milivojevic to James MacArthur, who passes it to Max Meyer. Max Meyer tries to turn the defender, takes the shot, and it's easily saved by Henderson. 31 minutes played, another chance for Crystal Palace here. James MacArthur sees Jordan Ayew making the run between two defenders, puts it in the back of the net, and it's 1-0 to Crystal Palace. 46 minutes played, a chance for Sheffield United here. George Bulldog crosses it in for Billy Sharp, it's not that bad. But now a free kick on the edge of the box for Sheffield United. Shoofs to take it. We got very lucky. 83 minutes played now. Zaha on the ball. He's trying to make something out of this. He passes it to Jordan Ayew. Jordan Ayew can't really get the shot off, so he brings it back to Zaha. Zaha to finish it off. 87 minutes played, Milivojevic back to Zaha, passing it to Jordan Ayew, to Kamarasa. Kamarasa sees Townsend making the run, Townsend into the back of the net, it's 2-0, we put the dagger in this match, and it's another 3 points for a pretty overachieving Crystal Palace right now. It is now the end of January, so we get to look at the table once again. Currently we are still 6th place, which means we are still able to get a Europa League spot I'm pretty sure, but nonetheless, uh, the top five is as follows. Spurs, Liverpool, Manchester City, Chelsea, then West Ham. We're tied for fifth place right now, but you know, the goal differential is just actually terrible. But you know, this is quite interesting, you know, I did not expect Crystal Palace to be this close to the top five in the first season. Everton. 14 minutes into the match, a chance here for Everton, Luka Digne to Mampala on the wing. He crosses it in for Sims, and it's 1-0 to Everton. Have you ever heard of these people? Because I haven't. Couple minutes later though, a chance for Crystal Palace to bounce right back. Jordan Ayew, through ball to James MacArthur, puts it into that top corner. Absolutely no chance for the keeper, and it's one all. 35 minutes played now, another chance for Crystal Palace. MacArthur to Zaha, Zaha finishes it into the back of the net, and it's 2-1, an easy little comeback for us. 51 minutes played, Jordan Ayew passing it to Naya Kirby. Kirby trying to see if he can take a shot, he turns to the defender, takes the shot, it's blocked by the defender but falls easily to James MacArthur, and it's 3-1 to Crystal Palace, just like that. Everton were not done though, they still wanted something, they were still trying to find a few more goals, Richarlison on the ball, whips in a cross for Nias, Nias eh? Nias? Either way, it's 3-2. Newcastle. Early into the match, a chance for Crystal Palace here. Box. 49 minutes played, a counter attack here for Newcastle. Atsu brings it to Ki Sun Young, who tries to find Muto, but Sako passes it basically right back to the attackers. <sighs> Thank you, Mamadou. Very cool. But just five minutes later, a chance for Crystal Palace here, and Meyer finds Schloop, who's gonna try and finesse it around the keeper. It's saved, but uh yeah, I'll take it. Couple more minutes later, Meyer back to Schloop. Schloop with the beauty into the top left corner. And just like that, we just turn it around and get that 2-1 win. Fellas, we have actual talent. I know, it, it took a long time for this to happen, but it finally happened. Or at least I'm praying it did. Folks, say hello to Giovanni Romano, 54 rated, Potential of 66 to 94, and he's only 14 years old. And then we have an even older player who's 58 rated and has a potential of 63 to 93. The Italians are giving Crystal Palace some hope. But it's already the end of February, so here's, uh, here's the table before we start everything in March. We actually climbed up to fifth place in the league. We are still about eight points below Chelsea, who's in fourth, but, I mean, fifth place. Still really, really impressive. To round off your top four, though, since we already mentioned fifth, Spurs, Liverpool, Manchester City, 
and like I said before, Chelsea. Brighton, 21 minutes played, a chance for Crystal Palace, Jordan Ayew to Max Meyer. 48 minutes played, Townsend to Kamarasa to Milivojevic who tries one outside the box and it's a very good save by Matt Ryan. 59 minutes played, Brighton now with the chance, Davy Prepper just running right past everyone, crosses it in for Pojan Palo. it's a little too deep so he brings it to Trossard with the shot, and it's a good save by Goeta. On the following corner though, it's a cross in for Brighton, and it's an easy catch for Goeta to start up a counter attack. He's trying to scout someone out, 